Welcome to In the Trenches. This is Dave Burke. We're brought to you by First Star Logistics. Tonight, the Bengals finished their preseason slate with a 16-7 win over the Los Angeles Rams. And as always, Dave Lapham was on the call and Dave has joined us. Dave, I think we have to start at offense uh, that fight for spots on this roster continues to heat up, especially players at the wide receiver position as guys like Trent Irwin and Kendrick Pryor uh, made their their last statement of what they can do to this for this team. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it started with Jake Browning. Jake Browning goes 19 for 24 for 173 yards and a touchdown. Um, Brandon Allen was solid, too, 11 for 15 for 130 yards. So I mean that's uh, that's pretty good production. That's 300 yards uh, out of your out of your two quarterbacks, and, and in so doing, they complete uh, 30 out of uh, 39 attempts. That's pretty pretty productive, and they they distributed it well. Irwin had nine catches for 93 yards. Lasseter had five for 42 yards. Pryor had five for 65 yards. So they had three different wide receivers or receivers uh, catch five or more passes. Uh, Travion Williams had four catches for 40 more yards out of the backfield. He ran the ball effectively as well. I mean, a lot of good offensive performances. Uh, there's, uh, there are no, no two ways about it. Jake Browning got his first touchdown pass in the preseason in his, uh, in his NFL career. I think he played in about, this might have been his eighth preseason game that he's been a part of, and he, he gets, that, uh, gets that touchdown pass. So, yeah, they, they were very productive. I thought that uh, the wide receivers and quarterbacks – we're on the same page. A lot of zone defenses. Uh, they played cover two, and uh, some of the time, and, and other coverages. And the middle of the football field was was wide open, and and behind the linebackers, in front of the safeties. Uh, Trent Irwin was making a living there. Others were as well. Then when they made an adjustment to try to take away the middle of the field, they worked uh, from the hash mark out to the sideline at the numbers and, and made catches there. So they they had a, a real good idea of what was going on and how to attack it. And, and they did it uh, pretty darn successfully. There's no question about it. Now, you know, wish, wish they had taken advantage of, of all opportunities. They had field position pluses early in the football game and had to settle for a field goal again. Uh, they had turnovers that were, that were uh, they won the turnover battle. They were plus two in that area. They forced three fumbles, recovered two of them. Uh, so they didn't turn the football over. They took care of the football. So they did a lot of things right offensively. And were complimented uh, very, very well defensively as well. When you when you hold a uh, shut out a team for three quarters, like the Bengals did tonight, uh, I don't care if it's a preseason game or, or what the heck it is. These these guys are all fighting for their lives, fighting for jobs. And the defense steps up like they did, and uh, and just and shuts them out for three quarters of the football game. That's a that's a darn good performance. And a lot of guys stepped up. A lot of young defensive players stepped up as well. Dave, I mean. Up front uh, in the defensive line, guys were guys were making plays. Guys you'd expect to make plays, you know, were making plays. Zach Carter showed up early. He forced a fumble early on in the football game. Jeff Gunter was making noise coming off the edge, uh, but but other guys that you know had to uh, had to step up. One one guy that impressed me after his 20 tackle game, 16 unassisted. Clay Johnston. Had to suck it up and get ready for two days of pretty physical practice against the Rams, and then the game tonight. I packed him in the locker room after the game. And he said, "Man, it was taking him a little while to recover, but he he got there and, and he made some plays." And I thought it was a good touch. Uh, Zach Taylor tonight sent out guys that were Cincinnati guys uh, to be captains, and one of those guys that was sent out there was T. Gray Scales, uh, Colerain product, and uh, Desmond Noel was another one that that went out there for the coin toss, and that's a big deal to those guys. I thought that was really a classy move uh, by Zach Taylor for the coin toss to, to do that. And uh, boy, he, 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 he had like six tackles. He was involved in a turnover. Um, I thought tonight was going to be a big night to, for him to show up on special teams, and he did well there, but he showed up on the defensive side of the football as well. So, you know, I thought he played a very sound game. Alan George, I thought, played a sound game in the back end defensively. A lot of a lot of guys that were given an opportunity to take snaps and say, okay, here you go one last time, a lot of them maximized it, Dave, and that's what you want to do. You want to maximize your opportunities. I thought Trey Hill played very well again up front in the offensive line. Um, and and you're, our guy, uh, the, big, the big tight end, Justin Riggs, 
and I showed that he's he's capable as uh is more than just a blocker and i thought he's shown himself we've talked about it more than once Dave. this guy can run block he can pass protect and i think honestly i think zach taylor as a play caller said hey big fella i'm gonna reward you you've done everything i've asked you've done all the blue collar work it lets you be a primary receiver and uh, route for a touchdown they threw him the football and he caught it you know he's been saying oh, i've got good hands and he proved it and uh so you know justin rig is making a statement uh, uh, you know a lot of these guys, they're saying, forget practice squad. I want to be considered for that 53-man roster. But I, I think a lot of guys won some practice squad spots tonight, worst-case scenario, and they keep that NFL hope and dream alive. And one thing, Dave, uh, when that cutdown happens Tuesday at 4 o'clock, that's not the end of the tweaks of the roster for the week. I can tell you that right now. Um, a lot of times over the years, I can think of a couple of different occasions. Michael Johnson one year, Vinny Ray another year, they wrapped him. And the team came to bring them back because they had guys that were injured. They wanted to put on injury reserve. After you cut down to your final roster, it's less time spent on injury reserve. It cuts in half. It goes from like six weeks to three weeks. So they're going to probably do that in a couple of cases. Get down to the 53-man roster with guys that might have to go on injury reserve and then put them on injury reserve and bring those guys back. Now the risky one is rolling the dice that somebody claims them. So that, that's, a, that's a very interesting deal. So, I mean, the juggling that's going to go on from a roster standpoint in the next few days here, Tuesday at 4 o'clock, it ain't over, like Yogi Bear says. It ain't over till it's over. So there's going to be some guys that are going to be losing some sleep uh, for, for, quite a few, uh, for quite a few nights here tonight. But I think a lot, of, a lot of young men should be proud of their performances. They left it all out in the field, and they, they gave themselves an opportunity. It's like we said a bunch, Dave, it's not here. 31 other teams in the National Football League and other professional leagues as well. It's not the National Football League. There's only one National Football League. But uh, guys are just trying to trying to play for as long as they can, as well as they can. And, and we're seeing the product of those other leagues on the Bengals in this preseason as uh, yep. I think it was Dominic Davis who yep. spent time, I think it was in the USFL, if I remember correctly, and – Yep. excelled there, got an opportunity. He's he's trying to make the most of it as well. Absolutely. Went up to him in the locker room after the game, and he was exhausted. I mean, he he, he was good. And I said, big boy, played well, man. Gave it all you got. He goes, hey, thanks, thanks, you know. Uh, just just trying to get a job. And that that's that's everybody's mindset. It's, it's interesting what they decided to do at the left guard position. They had Jackson Carmen take every stop the entire game because uh, Cordell Volson – had 96 snaps at the line of scrimmage. And because of COVID, Jackson Carmen only had 33. So they sat Cordell Wilson tonight, and they gave Jackson Carmen every snap at the left guard position. And now it's now it's uh, going to be, okay, we're going to make a decision. Because, you know, I'm thinking that uh, the sooner Frank Pollock can put those five guys together as a, as a number one offensive unit, every snap they can take in practice as you've got two weeks to get ready now for the Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be uh, valuable and vital. So they're going to have to make a decision there. And, and, and you know what? If, say, say Cordell Volson gets the job, which I think probably that's the way it's tracking. I think that, the, you know, from an ability standpoint, not just physical ability, but availability, uh, reliability, uh, responsibility, um, all, all the abilities. You know, Cordell Volson, is, is, he's, he's made of the right stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting if, in fact, they go at Jackson Carmen. Cordell Volson, I don't anticipate him folding his tent. I, I anticipate Cordell Volson to turn up the competition another notch and say, Coach, I can play, and I'm going to show you I can play. You know, I hope if it, if it does end up being Cordell Volson that Jackson Carmen takes the same approach and doesn't say, oh, you know, geez, I, I, didn't, I missed out, didn't get that starting job. They're going to need Jackson Carmen. At some point, somebody's going to get dinged up. Uh, in the offensive line, if in fact Jackson Carmen's not the starting left guard, or if he is Cordell Volson, if he's not the starting left guard, somebody's going to get dinged up. And you hope it's not for a, a, a big number of games. You hope, if it happens at all, that it's for a game, maybe a couple of games, whatever the case may be. You have to be ready to play. You can't get your dauber down. You can't mope. You can't feel sorry for yourself. you got to bust it. I mean, you know, I remember distinctly. Every single year, Dave went to training camp thinking, don't have anything. Got no job. Got to go win a job. First thing you do is you got to win a job. You got to make the final cut. The next thing is, 
is going to end up being a starter and approach it that way every, every single year. If you start taking things for granted, that's when you're going to get knocked off your perch, man. So, you know, it, it's an unbelievably competitive environment. They're the best in the world. You know, there, there, there are guys who knows what kind of trade, who might be out there on waivers for whatever reason. You just never know. So you can never say, I've made it. This is it. I'm the guy. I'm in. Unless you're a superstar, you know, multiple every single year Pro Bowl player, that's a different deal. But if you're just a, you know, a guy grinding to uh, grind out an NFL career for as many uh, years as you can, you can approach every single year that you have to go win yourself a starting job. And, and that's, the, that's the mindset, I think, to, uh, you know, to having some sort of a career. There's no doubt. In the Trenches with Dave Lappin is brought to you by First Star Logistics. If you're looking for a new career, First Star Logistics might be looking for you. They're a very highly active company in the community involved with sports and events across Cincinnati and the tri-state area. As we said, they're hiring. They're looking for motivated professionals for sales positions with paid training, salary, plus high commissions. If you're looking for a fun work environment, and Dave and I can attest, we always have a good time. We go down there and see how the people interact with each other and the, the environment as a whole. First Star Logistics might be the right place for you with all its unlimited earning potential. Go check out FirstStarLogistics.com to learn more. Dave, we, you, you talk about taking the opportunity, and you brought up Trey Hill. Here's a young man who you, you have to love the growth he's shown in his career. He knows going in. Right now, he's not going to be a starter. He knows his role, but he's done everything in the preseason to really anchor himself as a member of this team. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you want to be one of the – if you're not a starter, you want to be one of the offensive linemen that's activated for game day. You don't, you don't want to be a deactivation. You don't want to be one of the seven guys that they say, oh, no, you, you're not shooting out. you can stay on the sideline and stay close for this football game. Uh, you, you want to be participating. You want to be out there. You want to be part of the action and uh, be part of the team. And Trey Hill, I thought, you know, had a really solid game against the Giants at center and guard. And he, I think he followed up. It's not a one-hit wonder. I think his, his graph is, is uh, he's arrowing up. There's no doubt about it. And uh, he understands what it, what it takes. Uh, I, I, I really respect, I respect what he's doing. There's, there's no question about it. There's no two ways about it. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be on the 53-man roster. That, that's a given. There's, there's no, absolutely no doubt. And I said that, like I said, that's the first step. And, uh, you know, I can remember back, Dave, uh, in the day, uh, my rookie year in 1974, I was, I was drafted in the third round by the Bengals, uh, 61st ticket in the draft, which in today's NFL would have been late second, but there weren't as many teams in the NFL back then, so it was early third. And, uh, and, and then right after me, in the next round, they drafted uh, the. We were the two AP All Americans, myself and, and a guy named uh, named Daryl White from Nebraska. And it's like, okay, here we go. It's battle royale. Who's going to make the football team? And there were six preseason games back then, and I played in the first three of them. And I thought eh, it's going pretty well. And then all of a sudden, I'm just playing on special teams. You know, kickoff return, extra point field goal, and Daryl's playing. And I'm like, oh boy, now what's going on? Have they, have they seen enough or did I stink? <laughs> and Daryl's got the, going to be getting the job and how's he playing it? I mean, unbelievably stressful. You know, you just, you don't, you don't know what they're thinking and, and you can keep yourself up all night long. So, and Tiger Johnson has given no indication as to who's going to be, you know, the guy that the Bengals keep or not. So I, I bring my playbook with me because I think, you know, there's a chance it's not going to work out. So I, I um, go into the uh, go into Spinny Field, old Spinny Field, with my playbook. And Frank Spouse was the top. He was the guy to cut everybody, and he's right at that front door, walking into Spinny Field. So I kind of stop and stand in front of him, and thinking, okay, is it me? You know, and he kind of looked like looks around me. I'm like, oh, I guess it might be not me. You know, so I walk in and I go to my locker and I change into my shorts and t-shirt and go to the meeting room. And uh, Paul Brown in his meeting room, everybody had on a signed desk. And you had a na- your name on a on a piece of tape up at the right upper right hand corner of the desk to identify exactly where you're supposed to be. And the offensive lineman he had sitting up right at the front of the room in the team meeting room. So you had to walk by everybody, to get up front and sit right there. And then I was that's where my you know head, desk had been. So I'm thinking I wonder if I still have a desk. And I go up there, 
can't find a desk, can't find a desk with my name. And I'm like, son of a gun. I got cut. And I'll, that was a great impression I made on Frank Smelson, but he didn't even recognize me. He doesn't even know who I am. That's how, that's how bad I must be. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is terrible. So I'm, I'm, I'm sweating bullets. I'm feeling the heat coming off my chest. I know I have to be beat red. So I'm like, all right, show some class. Find Daryl. Congratulate him. I turn around. And Daryl was, you know, had been sitting behind me, and I looked, and there's no Daryl. I look around all the offensive linemen, you know, the veteran guy. There's, there's, there's no, no Daryl. So I'm thinking, wow, they cut both of the rookies. This is unbelievable. Well, Stan Walters, who was with the Bengals at the time, he became a Pro Bowl with the Eagles. We traded him for John Lee's quarterback, and he went to the Eagles and became a Pro Bowl. And he was my teammate at Syracuse, a couple years old than me. He had hidden my desk in the closet unbeknownst to me. So he starts chuckling and laughing. You hey, dumb rookie. Yeah, hey, yeah, you know, he pulls my desk up. I was I was ready to kill him. I mean I was like so 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 man, just like my blood pressure had to be two hundred over a thousand. And um so then after after the meeting, Paul Brown comes up to me, he goes, Congratulations, young man. I said, Coach, I said, Wow. I just you know I was thinking after the first three games, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, that's your first mistake. Don't be thinking. I'm, I'll do the thinking. You just go play. You go play. I said, well, coach, can you tell me what happened to Daryl? He goes, yeah, we traded him to Green Bay. And so they traded Daryl White to the Green Bay Packers for draft picks, and, uh, and I made the team as a rookie, and, uh, and, and it was about as stressful a time as I could ever remember. I, I just got married like a couple of weeks before training camp, went on a quick honeymoon, and I remember calling my wife, Lynn, and saying, Lynn, I think I made it. And then called two nights later. Ah, I think I'm kind of, I don't know. I didn't pass protect very well against Mike Reed. I think you're going to have to send me, a, I'm going to have to find a job. <laughs> Make sure you keep the classified ads in the Sunday newspaper. I'm going to be looking for a job. So it was, it was unbelievably stressful. So I can identify with what these guys are going through right now. And it's not going to be an easy next, uh, next couple of days as they wait for that Tuesday deadline at four o'clock in the afternoon. And like I said before, it's only the beginning. It can tweak and uh, tweak for two or three roster spots potentially. You're hoping you're not one of them. There's no doubt about it. Well, two local guys who are going to be waiting for what happens is at the punting position, longtime Bengals kicker, Kevin Huber, who I've had the chance to cover while he was at the University of Cincinnati, and Drew Chrisman, who I covered when he was at LaSalle High School uh, back in the day. Uh, both you know, are fighting for that job, and today against the Rams, Chrisman had two punts, for 53 and a half yards as an average, Huber had two punts. And while the average was only 37 and a half, both of his punts were inside the 20. How do you see that battle playing out? You know, it, it's interesting how, how the battle played out to their strengths. Uh, they were alternating punts and Chrisman had an opportunity to just boom, them, you know, and one of them hit the five yard line and bounced the end zone. Uh, but it was still a 25-yard punt. There's a 65-yard punt in the air, you know? It's, like, unbelievable. And that's what he can do. You know, there's it, it, there's going to be times during the season where you're backed up inside your own 20-yard line and you're facing fourth down. You want a punter that can uh, flip the field. Well, this guy can do that about as well as anybody. He's got a howitzer hanging off his right hip. But then, you know, Kevin Huber, the, the punts that he had an opportunity to, uh, to execute tonight, those were, you know, kicking from about midfield or just beyond midfield to directional punt and pin them inside the 20, inside the 10. He's unbelievably effective at it. That's what he does best. That's what Chrisman struggles at. Kevin struggles with the booming punts because of his leg strength at his age. So it, it's very interesting. Both of them executed the things they do well, but neither one was put in a position where they had to do the thing they didn't do well. <laughs> So Darren Simmons is still like, yeah, geez, I look at the tape. This is what they can do. Now I have to make a decision. And, and what it boils down to is both, both things are amazingly important. Um, you want to pin – if you can pin an offense back, not only inside their own 20, inside their own 10-yard line, which Kevin has done multiple times over the years, you make them go on a long field, 90 yards to, to pay dirt, and uh, you know, 60-plus yards for a field goal, legitimate field goal opportunity. That changes the way you call plays. That uh, you know gives the defense more incentive, gives them a little bit more juice offensively. You may become a little bit more conservative. You certainly don't want to turn it over, give the opposition a short field. 
So, you know, there are so many, you know, ripple effects from pinning the team back like that. And Kevin does that exceedingly well. But if you're, if you're pinned on the other side of it, if you're, you can't punch out a bad field position, you have to punch from your own 10 yard line. Kristen's a guy that can put them back at their own 20 or 10. He can flip that field like that. So I guess maybe Darren's going to, okay, over the course of the season, which is going to happen more and which do I think is, is, uh, you know, is, is the most important because that's what it's boiling down to. Um, and it was interesting in the early stages of training camp when he was talking about it, he said, you know, the role of the punter has changed so much in the NFL because they're all holders and it's like 60% hold or 40% punter now. So I'm thinking, oh, he's going with Huber. They, you know, Clark Harris and Kevin Huber have never had a mishandled snap. So that's, that's massive over a bunch of years. Like they've been together. How do you mess with that? And that operation is so clean for McPherson, you know, and give him confidence. Uh, but then as, as time's gone on, um, now Christman, who's got great eye-hand coordination himself, now he's really focused on the holding. And it's, it's, a, it's a toss-up there, according to Darren Simmons, when he's tracked everything. He's had different snappers, different holders, different kickers, and tracked, you know, all of it. And there hasn't been any kind of a, a big, you know, uh, glitch in, in terms of numbers and percentages because this snapper is snapping, this holder is holding. The kicker is a constant, obviously, with McPherson. He's so damn good. That's probably why it's not that big of a difference. This guy is unbelievable. He kicked another kickoff 85 yards through the uprights. <laughs> they should give him a ruse or something, man. They should give him something for that. But he, so all, of, all of those things are going to be part of the consideration. And from the very beginning, I thought, mm, a guy like Kevin Huber, it's going to have to be a knockout punch, not, not split decision. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a very very interesting decision for Darren Simmons to make. Uh, you know, I, I can I, it, if he goes either way, it's not like I'm going to say, "Why did he do that?" Oh my God! I mean, they're blessed, and whoever gets waived is going to get a job. There are, there are teams in the National Football League that have waived their punters because of stupid off field things that took place and uh, PR nightmares, and uh, you know that the, there's just punters that are a reason just got let go. That's going to be an opportunity for the player that gets, that gets waived by the Bengals. I think they're going to get gobbled up somewhere. It's not like they're not going to have a job. So it's going to be a very, very interesting decision. If Darren Simmons has made his decision, he's a hell of a poker player. He is. He's playing very, very close to the vest. And I'm, I'm thinking he wants to think about it, you know, for as long as he possibly can. And it's a. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting decision. Which, which thing does he? hold in the highest regard and then who is the best holder in his estimation and that's going to be who he keeps now in my opinion clark harris has a snapping job i don't think that you you know particularly if christman gets the punting job you don't change the whole operation in one year and clark harris has shown that you know it, he was he was challenged but he's shown that he can still get it done he's very consistent with the snaps he can still get down the football field well enough he's a big guy who can block, and he's seen every configuration uh, from a punt, a punt rush standpoint, uh, knows how to block it and calls to make and all that. All that experience is, is huge in the National Football League. I think the incumbent punter, Clark Harris, is safe. The interesting decision is who's going to be the punter slash holder. Both guys, like I said, I had a chance to cover during their careers before they became in the NFL. Great people off the field. Uh, Drew Chrisman, the master of the bottle flip, uh, is a, a brand new father. Him and his wife just had a child here recently. And Kevin and his wife do a lot of community stuff. So great people both ways there. Uh, Dave. You know, you, you should see you see Drew Chrisman play ping pong. Oh, my God. In goodness. the locker room, they have a ping, ping pong tip. This kid is unbelievable with eye hand coordination. And like you said, Kevin Huber has done a ton of good in the community. I mean, Kevin Huber is a is a local legend. There's no question about it. There's no doubt. Yeah. Drew, Drew was more than just a punter when he was in, in high school at LaSalle. He, he was, he was a, yep. a very good athlete as well. So, and as you said, I mean, hope the best for both of them. Cause they're, like I said, they're both great people uh, that I had a chance to uh, interview multiple times during their college and high school careers. So um, it, it, it's going to, it's one of those things where you're, you, you're going to be happy for whoever gets it, and you're going to be watching what the other one ends up doing because you know that they have a chance to be very successful. 
Um, Absolutely. Dave, it, it, it's hard to believe. Preseason, officially over. No more games. Next time. Not hard to believe for me, Dave. Not hard to believe. <laughs> week week one, couple weeks. It's of, about time. Week. I know it, it's and I and I all the time when when especially when people when I'm with you and I have a chance to, and and people come into the studio or whatever we're talking and they're like yeah I mean I can't wait for the season and, and you go yeah you should have been back when I was playing when we had six games or when we had to play in the uh, the Hall of Fame game and had Hall seven fame, yeah <laughs> you know yep. and, and people go Crazy. and they just the jaw drops and they go huh <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah. but yeah. real, real football, football that really counts, football that really matters. Um, and I have a feeling, I mean, everything we're seeing on social media, there's going to be some chips on some shoulders of some Bengals players. Cause they're not, there's not a single Bengal in the top 20 in the NFL uh, from what's going to be released tomorrow. And I think I, I knowing Joe Burrow, the way I do, and some of those other guys, and you know that how competitive they are, you know, Hey, behind it, the back of their mind, they're going to say, we'll show you. We're going to show you. So it should be an exciting season. Week one, just a couple weeks away, when the Bengals are going to host the Pittsburgh Steelers for the first time to open the season at Paycor Stadium. Yep. And uh, you'll be there on the First Star Logistics radio network. And, I mean, you've yep. got you got to be – how many years, Dave? You're, you're, you've got – this I, I keep losing track because you had your playing career. I we, we, we talked where you had the one fall where you kind of sat in the stands because you'd went to the USFL and but then you've been behind the mic and uh, with multiple people. And again, I, as I tweeted today during the game, nothing like listening to Dan Horton you with what you do on the First Star Logistics Radio Network. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to the opener. There's no question about it. And I think, I think all the Bengals players that you're talking about, I, I think. Like Joe Burrow said about the Super Bowl, that's last year. That's over with. That's history. Last year is last year. He, they are all laser focused on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's in, that, in two weeks, that's, that's the, when the rubber meets the road. And it's very interesting because Mike Tomlin, according to people that I've talked to over in Pittsburgh, every time they wear pads, they're hitting and tackling, taking people to the ground. He's of the old school mentality. He's half the league is is uh, staying with some physicality in training camp and the other half of the league is not. And he's, he's playing uh, some of his, he's playing a lot of his starters or he had been in the first couple of preseason games. Other teams are not the Rams and the Bengals are the same cut from the same cloth, the same ilk. It's going to be interesting to see in that opener, which team is more ready to play. Is it the Pittsburgh Steelers who have been doing more hitting in training camp uh, with their, with their, you know, key players, or is it the Cincinnati Bengals that wanted to make sure that they all made that uh, that opening kickoff against the against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers on September 11th? So it's going to be very interesting to uh, to take a look at. But I'll tell you what I've seen out of this football team. I think it's a damn good football team. I think they're loaded with talent. I think their defense is, is going to be very very impressive to watch. I think they can all run to the football offensively with Joe Burrow at the helm and. And the skilled players, they've got a receiver and running back. I mean, they're going to be a stoopful in, in, at the tight end position as well with Hayden Hurst and, you know, Joe Mixon and, and those uh, three receivers. I mean, I, I, I just think that, that this, this football team is, is going to be a stoopful for anybody and everybody. Uh, it's, there's going to be a bunch of close football games, though, because everybody's hopes are high right now. 32 teams in the NFL are undefeated right now, and they all, they all have high, high hopes for the playoffs. So. That's life in the league, and you got to win your share of the close ones. And I feel pretty good about the Bengals' ability to do that, Dave. Just a reminder, everybody, you haven't, make sure you check out the video we released on Friday with Duke Tobin. It gives a lot of insight about building the team uh, of the 2022 Cincinnati Bengals. Make sure you watch that because he, he, was, he was stellar in, in being generous with his time and the information that he gave. Also, again, we want to thank First Star Logistics for everything they do for In the Trenches, for Dave Lappin and myself. And again, if you're looking for a new career, be sure to check out FirstStarLogistics.com for more information. Dave, I look forward to the coming weeks and months that we're going to be spending together with In the Trenches. And I'm excited as you are about what this team has the possibility of doing in the 2022 season. Yeah, and Dave, I, to echo your sentiments about uh, first star logistics football is the ultimate team game in my opinion 
you know, there's 22 uh, moving parts on every single snap in a football game. That's the ultimate team game. And I think uh, if, you're, if you're a guy that's used to that type of an environment, you're a team player, first all logistics is right up your alley. Because they're, they're a team, they're, that, that's a team as well. We talk about in the offensive line, five playing is one. That's the mentality and the philosophy of first all logistics as well. Everybody takes care of everybody else. Everybody leans on everybody else. Uh, they know that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not I, me, it's we, us. And that's the environment. And if you're used to that type of environment, first star logistics is where you want to be. We thank you, everybody, for listening and watching on YouTube. Also, be sure, if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. Also, like the videos as that helps the algorithm and YouTube for more people to find them. And until next time, this is Dave Burke for Dave Lapham. Let's go Bengals. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, got to get that body right. That's so. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.